I see the Zoom room is filling up. It is nine o'clock on Wednesday morning. And you're tuning in to the Coffee Hour presented by the Penn State Alumni Association. As always, go ahead and let us know who you are and where you're Zooming in from today. We have a great show lined up. We are joined today by Randy Jepson. He's the head coach of men's gymnastics here at Penn State. We look forward to talking to him in a couple minutes. But before we get to that, let's welcome some people. I see Pete Sheridan from Blandon, a regular here on Coffee Hour. Pete, welcome. We will be getting started in just a minute or two, letting the Zoom room fill up here for our conversation on Coffee Hour today with head men's gymnastics coach, Randy Jepson. I see Vicki Gensel from Harrisburg and Dennis Paglietti from San Francisco. An early morning for you, Dennis, class of 65 gymnast. I know the uh, alumni of our gymnastics program are always loyal and uh, run into them all over the place. Again, we'll be getting started in just a minute. Welcome to coffee hour. Where else would you rather be than a Zoom full of Penn Staters? I'm Paul Clifford, CEO of the Penn State Alumni Association. And welcome to the Penn State Alumni Association's Coffee Hour. Each week, you can expect to hear the voices of Penn Staters talking about what they're passionate about, and you can expect to feel the pride and the power of the Penn State Network. We are recruiting, we are recording this session, and closed captions are available for this event. You can find the information in chat on Zoom or in comments for our Facebook Live audience. Before we dive in, I'd like to remind everybody a special collaboration by some of our colleges and campuses at Penn State, the Cooking Classic. Tonight, when it starts, uh, Wednesday evenings from January 20th to February 10th, a series of cooking virtual events uh, presented by campuses and colleges here at Penn State. To learn more, visit the link in the chat box for more information about that. Today, we're going to talk to Randy Jepson. He's the head coach for men's gymnastics here at Penn State. Randy has spent 38 years as coach within the men's gymnastics program with the last 30 as head coach. Randy has led Penn State to three national championships and four Big Ten team titles, having coached numerous individuals to national titles and all American honors. He has also coached in the international. He has also coached international at the world and Olympic level. Uh, Randy has been married to his wife, Sue, also a Penn State graduate for 35 years. They have four children and five grandchildren. I'm excited to welcome Randy Jepson, head men's gymnastics coach to Coffee Hour. Randy, good morning. Good morning. Great to see you. So good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Um, your path to Penn State was a bit unusual. You're an Oregonian having grown up in Portland and you started out as an Oregon Duck before they discontinued their program after your junior year. Talk about how you became a Penn State Nittany Lion. Well, it was really kind of tragic. You know, we had had an outstanding squad there at Oregon and placed in the top three pretty much each year that I was there. And we had finished the NCAA championships with a third place finish, came home uh, in April, and that was on a Sunday. On Tuesday, we were in the president's office being told that our program was no longer. And the fact that the signing date had already passed, there were very few opportunities of places to go. Fortunately, um, I had an opportunity that opened up at Penn State and uh, I did know a couple of the guys that were here. I had kind of watched their team from afar and had seen the affinity that they had for one another. And obviously the history here spoke a great deal to me, plus the uh, top ranking in my major in kinesiology, uh, both undergrad and graduate. So that was a big positive for me and that was a draw. So coming to Penn State, you were already a highly accomplished gymnast. 
three-time letterman, a national finalist in the rings at Oregon. Uh, and then you come to Penn State and you're immediately voted team captain and, um, and earned All-American status your senior year. But uh, as I've been doing some background research, it was really an exhibition meet against the Russian national team that was that stood out. Tell us a little bit about that meet and about your senior year here at Penn State. Yeah, well, I, w I was fortunate. I was with a great group of guys and, and was able to, to jump in with them and, and be a part of uh, something that we, we really uh, feel was special in, in seeing things gel with our team and, and developing from there in the years ahead. Um, but uh, I, I was fortunate in that, you know, I would have kept training in my 40s, I think, had I had an opportunity to, because I, I just love to train. Um, and the fact that uh, I was going on to graduate school and still here, and there was an opportunity to compete uh, uh, against the, the Soviet Union in, a, in a, a meet that uh, was being held here in Rec Hall. You know, Gene Whetstone was known for his gymnastics spectac spectaculars, and um, there was a, a team of, of great Soviet athletes that came through, a number of which went on to be, one was an Olympic all-around champion, um, later on, uh, a few years later, but uh, they came through Rec Hall, and I remember it was standing room only. People stood outside to get tickets the night before, uh, and, and slept outside. and And we had a packed house, and uh, was able to compete in that meet as a uh, as I was finishing up my undergraduate degree. And so that was a, a, a once in a lifetime opportunity for me. So it's it's interesting. Um... That meet, if I if I have my dates correct, right? That meet was after we had just boycotted the Olympics in in Russia in Moscow, and before they boycotted the the LA Olympics uh, in in '84. And so, um, a, a rare opportunity to have uh, the Soviet national team here in the United States competing. Yeah, it was it was quite a novelty. In fact, there was a lot of people that just wanted to come to see communists. What do they look like? <laughs> And uh, we had shirts that were made up and it said PSUSSR, meaning, you know, Penn State University and, and the USSR. Here we are merging in Rec Hall. And uh, I won't necessarily say it was a goodwill tour, but it was a great night of competition and, and a great night of uh, gymnastics and, and uh, one that's very memorable for me. Yeah, a lot of that political and economic stuff gets set aside when you're competing in sport, right? It's a, it's a great equalizer and... Uh, a great way to to unify people around something that we all have in common, right? They, they use the same pommel horse in, in, in Moscow that, that you were using here in Rec Hall. And so, um, but before you became a household name in men's gymnastics, you were a, a high school wrestler. Do you ever think back, you know, if I stuck with wrestling, people might not know who Kale Sanderson is today? No, I don't know about that, but uh, I, I'll, I'll tell you, I was a way better wrestler than I was a gymnast. Um, I did far better at the state and, and national level in wrestling than I did in gymnastics. But gymnastics was a passion for me. It's something that I, I took on to help me with my wrestling. And by the time I was a junior in high school, it, it just had so much more diversity. Um, I won't say less of a grind because it's a grind in different ways. Yeah. But I love the fact that you could go to a competition and actually have great conversations with your competitors and and that kind of thing. And, and uh it opened up kind of a new world to me and it, it's certainly paved a, a way for a life and a, a career. You know, it's funny. I grew up in a wrestling household. My brother wrestled in college and my mom would ask him, you know, did, did you have fun at practice today? And he's like, mom, I'm a wrestler. I, I never have fun. You know, so it's, it's funny. A, it's a different kind of grind. Yeah. It, it's funny, Paul, you know, you mentioned the wrestling and you know what I was doing last night? I was home. I wasn't watching world cup gymnastics. I was watching world cup wrestling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, Who's look, I mean, wrestler? you tune into that, and uh, and every other every other match is featuring a Penn Stater, and so yeah. the um, I know Erica Dombach calls uh, Rec Hall the Hall of Champions over there, and certainly what you and Russ and Erica and and Kale have built over there is a, a national championship factory. We're going to talk about your three national championships. In just a minute, this is the Coffee Hour presented by the Penn State Alumni Association. I'm Paul Clifford, and I'm joined by Randy Jepson, three-time national champion, men's gymnastics coach. So, Randy, did you imagine after transferring to Penn State that you would spend the next almost 40 years here in Happy Valley and, and make Pennsylvania your home? No, I never did. And it's kind of a funny story. Um, I, I remember being here on the first day. I drove in and spent the night, got up the next day, and, and I loved to run, so I went on a run around campus, 
And I remember being down at the track and then I ran around through campus, finished at Rec Hall and I walked in Rec Hall and I stood up at the railing overlooking Rec Hall from the front looking down. And in my mind, I thought, wow, so this is where it's all gonna happen. Thinking this is where my senior season's gonna happen. Little did I know, I look back 40 years now and I say, did I really, really realize that I would have my first date with my wife in the, in the racquetball courts down the hall and that I would have meets that I would lead teams to championships here and lead men? It never, never uh, crossed my mind, but uh, you know, it's, it's been a great ride. Well, look, Oregon's loss has certainly been Penn State's gain. Um, after your eligibility was exhausted, uh, you immediately joined the coaching staff under Carl Schreier. Was was it your plan all along to go into coaching? I know you mentioned you were a kinesiology major. That's usually a path for people into um, into the coaching space. Was that your goal? I did want to coach and teach, and I was able to do that here. I didn't know if it would be at high school, uh, high school level or, or what it would be, but I, I really enjoy leading and uh, working with young people, and I wanted to have that kind of impact on, on folks, and so um, the the opportunity arose when I was a graduate student to, to work with Carl. And then after I finished graduate school, he invited me to stay on as a full-time assistant here. And uh, the job didn't really change much from me from the time I was a grad assistant to when I was a full-time person, because I was pouring myself into it, you know, hundred percent and then some, but uh, uh, it was a, a, an open door that I certainly welcomed to, to fill and uh, really appreciate the opportunity that Carl brought, brought to me. So talk a little bit about your coaching philosophy and how that was shaped. You know, uh, you coach under Carl Schreier, um, your Oregon coach, Bill Ballister was a, was a big influence on, on you and your career. Talk about um, your philosophy and how it was influenced by, by your coaches. Yeah. You know, B Bill was um, a really interesting guy. He uh, was a psychology, psychology major, had a master's in psychology. So he really knew the ins and outs of how to motivate people. And uh, he did a lot of things that were maybe, um, I guess you could say, unconventional. But he uh, was able to really codify and pull a team together. And the fact that we did so well with not a lot of talent at Oregon really spoke to me. And his methods in terms of building consistency and, and having a, following a plan were, were very, very key in, in kind of my success as an athlete. And then what I brought when I came to Oregon as even as a team captain talking to our guys about some of the things I thought we, we could probably improve on. And, uh, uh, you know, I think Carl recognized those things as well. And, and uh, Carl, Carl was a guy that he got me to think out of the box a little bit more. And he was one of the most novel gymnastics thinkers that I know. Um, short story, uh, Carl, we had a great team in, in 91, um, but not great enough. We, we couldn't win because we were really weak on vault. And Carl thought, you know, we've got to improve our vault. And, and he had this crazy idea that here we are about a month left in the season and you got originality for skills at that point. Um, and so he thought, what if we had guys do a front somersault onto the vault and then handspring off? It's nobody had ever seen anything like that. And automatically, you know, we don't have the guys that can do these other big vaults. So let's, let's take out of the box and go a different direction. So we had three guys come together and do those vaults and doggone it, if it didn't, push us to the nearly the top of the vaulting scores. And we finished second in the country that year to Oklahoma. But uh, we were a team that was probably fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh place team. But just that ability to think out of the box has stuck with me all these years. And so I'm always looking for a new novel approach to, to any problem, especially, you know, uh, skill choices or, or how we approach something in the gym. So your, your success in the gym is, is impressive. Three national championships four Big Ten championships, 125 All-Americans. You had seven Nissan, uh, Nissan Emery Award recipients, 13 um, individual national champions, including Mark Son, the first to win four consecutive Pommel Horse national crowns. What's your, what's your secret to your success? Uh, I, you know, we talked about wrestling a little earlier, and I draw a lot of parallels between wrestling and gymnastics in that while it is, it is considered a team sport, right? It's individuals out there kind of on an island competing on behalf of their team. What's the secret to success? How do you build the team culture to think about team while still going out and competing individually? Well, well number one, you need to realize that, uh, you know, there was success here long before I got here mm -hmm. uh, at a historic level. And the fact that uh, uh, 
you know, Penn State had already had the most number of national team titles, nine, and we've added to that to make 12 now, still the leader tied with Oklahoma. In terms of individual titles, you know, we now have 55, I believe, uh, 55, 56 individual NCAA champions. And most of that was, a lot of that was done before I even got here. Uh, and so, you know, that and the number of All-Americans we have, this is something that's been built on the 20 Olympians that we've got over the whole career of the program. So when you have that kind of success and history, it makes recruiting, quite honestly, a lot easier. People know that not only have you been successful, but you have support there to be successful. And in this day and age, that's really, really important to be able to go into a living room and talk to a family and say, yeah, you know, we've been successful and here's why, because we have an administration, we have alumni, we have people that stand behind our program because they see it's not just about the W's, it's about kind of what we're doing in the gym and out of the gym with a classroom and the kind of men we're putting out in terms of who they wanna be and, and what they wanna be. And so that brings a lot to the table to begin with. And then you throw into it the fact that, um, you know, we, we, we have a real strong gymnastics family here. Uh, our team comes in and most guys have always competed as an individual, whether they're an all around or an individual event guy. And they come to this melting pot of people and they're kind of thinking about themselves. And we kind of change that to get them to think about the other guy more than themselves. Because when they give themselves for the guy next to them, they're going to get it back in spades because you've got 19 other guys that are doing that for you. And so once people recognize that, they get that buy in, um, really, really good things happen. And it's a lot of fun to be a part of. You know, you mentioned it's easy to recruit here. Take us a little bit inside that recruiting visit. First of all, what does recruiting light look like for men's gymnastics? Kind of what is the um, the time frame, and and how do you identify talent? And then what is your pitch once you've identified who you think might be a good fit for the Penn State program? Sure. Well, um, you know, recruiting's changed a lot over the years. Uh, we used to have to travel a great deal. We still do when the time permits. Right now, we can't get out. We haven't traveled at all this year recruiting, obviously, right. because of the pandemic. And we've had no visits to campus. But, um, you know, the advent of, of the internet and, and uh, technology, um, you know, we've got a lot of international inquiries because Penn State's a great school. Uh, I can't tell you the number of kids that, that uh, you know, approach us from overseas because they've looked into our engineering program or... Our, our, our business program or whatever it might be, um, the sciences. And that's a big draw. And then they see that we can do gymnastics here at a high level, uh, it, it's a great sell. And so, you know, we used to get uh, super eight movies years and years ago, and it would take weeks to, to look over things or transcribe uh, uh, VHS tapes and from different places. Um, now, you know, you just go to YouTube, a guy sends you a link and you click on it and I can watch from my phone in the gym and see the routines that the guy's doing or the skills. So, you know, th that's uh, streamlined a great deal. But, um, you know, one of the things we look at right away is, is number one, do they have the aptitude to be a great student? And our team has been very, very successful academically. You know, we've had a number of guys that have done outstanding. Right now we have a guy on our team. He's gonna graduate this semester in mechanical engineering, already has a job. He's a 4-0. He's had a 4-0, he's never gotten anything less than an A. And he's, he's had we, had the NCAA championships, he would have been the Elite 90 award winner last year in the NCAA with the highest academic situation. He'll probably win that this year again. That's that's uh, Jack Baldwin. We had Noah Roberson in that vein as well. So we've had that kind of history as well where we have great students. So people see that that's a big priority for us. You better pull the, the weight in the classroom. And uh, if you don't want to be a great student, then don't come to Penn State because that's what we're about. And so uh, they have to be that academic fit. But then we also want to see guys that, that really not just um, could put scores up, but can do beautiful gymnastics. Uh, being an artistic gymnast is, is way better than just being a plugger who puts in a score because um, you know, the, the people in the long run that are gonna do the best for your program are the ones that are gonna really sell your look and your style. And so we've got a number of guys, had a number of guys over the years and have a number right now that are very artistic and beautiful to watch. I can't wait to showcase some of our freshmen because uh, they're in that vein, and I'm really excited about what they're going to bring for the future. So those are a couple of the things that I, I really look for. As far as going into the living room, like I said, you know, those are basically the things I talk about, the commitment to um, the guys next to you, the commitment to your education, and uh, the commitment to making Penn State a better place than you found it when you leave. And, you know, that kind of takes care of itself if you can find those kinds of people. Absolutely. We're talking with Randy Jepson. He is the head men's gymnastics coach here at Penn State, three-time national champion. Uh, 
your how does your team look going into this year? You said you're excited about the freshmen, um, but these freshmen are coming to a men's gymnastics program that is facing uh, that that is facing challenges that that you all haven't faced as a team, you know, to start a season. Certainly, it impacted the way um, you know the way things ended last year, uh, but the way things are are starting this year and and all the protocols that you have to go through. Talk a little bit about um, your uh, the season and the team that you have this year and where you think they might go. Yeah. You know, one of the things we te teach a lot on is just being gritty and, and you're not going to get anywhere in the sport, but you're not going to get anywhere in life unless you can weather the tough times. And that's a, uh, something that across the board, we talk a lot about with our coaches here at Penn state. And, and it's something that's kind of stuck out over the past five or six years. That is a key ingredient that we're seeing in some senses, uh, it hasn't really been taught. It's not really present like it used to be. And so that's something we teach on a lot is, is being gritty. And that's something that I look at our freshmen and, and all of our team members. And that's the calling that we've had to them uh, this year is that you are faced with something that no one has ever been faced with in the realm of NCAA sport. Um, and the fact that I have the largest freshman class that I've ever had, it, it's posed some big challenges, but Buy-in is a key ingredient, and that's one of our, our hallmarks on our team. Uh, mission and vision is, is buy-in and being a family. And so getting them to understand that, yeah, you know, um, the, the, the calling for us is different than we expected. It's, it's maybe uh, a, a stranger thing than, that, that we didn't anticipate. You know, we usually bring our guys in in the summer. They couldn't get it to the fall. You know, we had some limited training and some different things happening because of the, the protocols. Everybody's facing that. The one that will weather the storm the best has the greatest chance for success. And that goes in life in anything. Yeah. And so right, while we're teaching along lines of, of what's happening with our sport, we have, always have an eye to life itself. And so they're getting this every day. And you know, hopefully these are lessons that they're gonna be able to take and impart to their own family someday. But you've gotta be gritty, you've gotta stay the course and you gotta believe in the plan that we have. And I, I gotta tell you, Penn State has done an outstanding job in terms of taking care of our athletes, uh, the protocols that are in place, the safeguards, the testing. Um, I'm, it, it's something that I've been really proud of. You know, look at our football team. They were able to play every game and they have guys in and out, no question, but they played every game. And there were teams out there that missed, you know, good parts of their season. And we're looking to be one of those teams that, that stays the course, stays on the protocols and, and has productivity through the season and has something to really celebrate at the end. Absolutely. You know, we talked a little bit about your coaching philosophy early, earlier and what you learned from some of your coaches. But, you know, I, I have been to some of uh, Sandy Barber's staff meetings before and I look around the room and it's, it's a room of champions. Are there lessons that you've learned from some of the other coaches over the years uh, that you now apply to, to your sport, whether it's how you, um, how you motivate a student athlete or how you um, handle adversity? Uh, I, I look around and I mentioned some of them earlier, Kale Sanderson, you know, Coach Pavlik, uh, you know, the, all the national champions that you have just uh, out of the coaches who are uh, based in Rec Hall. Uh, what, what are some of the things you've learned over the years from coaches you've been around here at Penn State? You know, I, I, it's hard to point one thing out. I think it's more of a, a, a philosophy, a, a, an attitude that we get. Sandy's done a really good job of, of pulling us together and uh, increasing communication during my time here. And, and that, that sense of family has been built on. We always had a great sense of family, but I think there's maybe a little bit greater degree of intimacy in some ways now um, than maybe some of the other years. Part of that's because of what we've been through. Yeah. Uh, and and it, it's been nice to be able to, to rub shoulders and to talk with other coaches. I can't say that there's one necessarily thing that, that stands out to me. It's more just an air of, you know what? Um, uh, the we're all in this together. We're going to push and pull together. And, uh, you know, if you do have a need, let me know. I, I think we've had some gr uh, great additions in terms of some of our support personnel as well, you know, our, our nutritionists and, and uh, certainly our, uh, our sports psychologists have done a great job for us, our, our performance enhancement people, those in, in, in exercise and, and uh, our, our, our strength training and whatnot, we've been able to utilize them a little bit more than we have in other years. It's really a team effort overall, so. Um, speaking of, of coaches, your time overlapped here with Coach Paterno. Uh, do, you, do you have a favorite memory or favorite story about Coach? I have several. <laughs> you know, one of them, um, 
Oh gosh, I have a number that I could share. I wish I had more time to do that because there's just some really good ones. But one of one of the ones I remember, we went to Pittsburgh on a speaking engagement. And we were on the, the plane and, and, and flew into Pittsburgh and and uh, we had our speaking engagement and it was a, a great time. And, and Joe had this briefcase with him the whole time. And I'm thinking, what is Joe taking a briefcase? We're going to speak and we're coming back. I mean, what's the deal, you know? And and we, we speak and he gets on the plane and he's got his briefcase still. And I'm thinking, he has no notes, you know, Joe does this all the time. He knows what he's doing. And, and we get in the plane and we sit down and the, the engine's fired up and he gets the go ahead to take off. And Joe goes, well, he opens up the briefcase and pulls out a bottle of brandy. Anybody want any brandy? <laughs> it, it was the after speaking engagement cocktail. <laughs> Little did I know. <laughs> always prepared, right? Yeah, he was always prepared. But you know, on, on those trips, I had a great uh, time with Joe in that he always told me um, the two coaches that he was enamored of the most. One was John Wooden, obviously, you know, historic coach. And the other one was Gene Whetstone. He said he saw Gene do more with his teams than any other coach with little. And, and, and Gene uh, was really able to pull a lot out of his guys. So the fact that Joe really understood uh, a Whetstone's mark here in, in the world of gymnastics and hit at Penn State um, really meant a lot to me. And so we had some great discussions about that over the years. So your success hasn't been confined to just to NCAA competition, but it's extended to the international stage, including a bronze medal at the 2008 Olympic Games. Talk a little bit about some of the coaching experiences that you've had on the international level and, and some of the, the differences between competing and, and motivating athletes at that level and motivating athletes here at the collegiate level. Yeah. You know, there's, there's some, some big differences and some not so big differences. You know, it's funny because it doesn't matter what level you're at. Every athlete has some apprehensions and, you know, uh, whether you're stepping up at a world championship or an Olympic games, you know, there's that, that, that always have I prepared enough and, and that assurance that you want to have. And so that's part of it is just getting those guys on the team to gel together, to be a group, even though you don't have a lot of time to do that necessarily. Uh, the nice thing for us is that in the international realm, a lot of the guys that we work with have competed together through the years in the collegiate system. Case in point in 2008, we had a great team, but unfortunately the team kept getting chipped away at because we had guys that were injured and out. And when we got to the games, there was uh, three of the guys that were on the team had already been had, had to be removed. That's half the team because of injury. And so it was about four days before the meet, five days before the meet. And one of the guys has to go home. He, 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 he's not ready to go because he had an injury. And we had to bring uh, Sasha Artemev in from, from the US. He flies over to China. I go to the practice gym with him and another guy and they have a competition and I, I have to judge them and decide who's gonna go in the, in the meet. Wow. And so um, Sasha had pommel horse. He did a great job. We needed the pommel horse. So we, we, we go with Sasha. Lo and behold, the guys, they're on the floor of the, the team final of the Olympic Games for a medal. And, and you got to understand, we, we were a team that a few a couple years be, behind that, people had questions whether we'd qualify. We finished 12th. And if you finish out of the top 12, you don't even qualify. Well, here we were. We climbed our way back in and got qualified. And now we're knocking on the door for a team medal with half the team that we were expected to have. Well, we ended up uh, going into that meet and the guys were on fire. They looked at each other and they said, you know what? We've all done this together in college at the NCAA meets our whole career. So let's go. They felt it was just like the NCAA championships. They went through event after event, it came down to pommel horse. Sasha goes up last guy, rocks a routine and the team gets a bronze medal. They had experienced that in the NCAA. They stepped into it at the international level at the Olympic Games in Beijing, and they lived it again. And so that that breeding ground in the NCA is is just perfect for what we experience in the in the uh, international realm. And, and so you know, it, in some ways, it's it's almost as a coach, you have to know which buttons to push, and how to pull guys together. And we, as a coaching group, were able to do that. It was really exciting to see, and and we had the right group of guys at the right time. It was a, a great event. Those international experiences are awesome. A lot of the times internationally, you're not necessarily with a team. You're with a, an individual that you take overseas to a World Cup or an individual World Championships. And uh, we've had some guys do very, very well in those, those uh, settings as well. Steve Netarosic right now is vying for a spot as an individual to, to hopefully go to Beijing. Yeah. Sorry, go to Tokyo. <laughs> right. Steven Netarosic is one of those guys too, who um, was an, an unbelievable student here at Penn State. He was one of those NCAA 90s and 
um, and and not in an easy major. I think he was a he was a double major engineering. Uh, yeah, two he, he's an electrical engineer, right? Yeah, electrical engineer, and he's going to plan on going to grad school. So he, he, that's his plan to continue here. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. You know, it strikes me that, that there's a, just a huge difference between men's gymnastics and women's gymnastics, where uh, men who go to compete at the collegiate level still might have an international uh, opportunity after that, where, whereas women, their international opportunities are done by the time they get to the collegiate level. Yeah, very much so. There's There's been a couple of anomalies in, in recent history, but um, for the most part, the, the women are done with their international careers by the time they're in college. Whereas the men are really on the rise, and we're the basically the the training ground and and the the breeding ground for for their development, and so you don't see many gymnasts that are 18, 17 years old stepping in and winning medals. You see those guys that are 25, 26, 27, uh, even even as old as 30 years old competing internationally and and bringing home the hardware. Yeah, you know you have received um, Coach of the Year honors. Uh, but there was one in particular that stood out to me, uh, and that's the CGA, the CGA honor coach that you received in 2011. Talk a little bit about what that award means and, and in particular, how that award was presented to you. Well, really what it means is you hung around a long time and you didn't mess it up. <laughs> uh, it, it's given to, to individuals that have been in the sport at a coaching level for 25 years and uh, have, have made an impact on the sport. And so uh, basically, that's that's the truth. If if you if you don't mess it up and you do a good job, you get you get a, an honor coach award. So, <laughs> so uh, we like to have a little bit of fun here on Coffee Hour with the lightning round. So I'm going to throw just a couple quick questions at you, and and you tell me the first thing that comes to mind. The first one's a tough one. So, uh, your favorite Penn State memory? I would have to say, well, me personally, it was my meet against the Soviet Union in Rec Hall. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, your favorite class at Penn State? Probably my my coaching class with Ellen Perry, who was an administrator here. She was an instructor when I was uh, a student. But uh, it was just great to be able to, to talk about the things that I knew I wanted to do in my life as a coach and, and you know, uh, do that with other peers and, and with uh, professionals. It was it was a good, good class, really good class. If you could have dinner with anyone, who would it be and why? Oh, my. Well, I'm going to have to say my wife because she's awesome. <laughs> and uh, I get to do it every night. But yeah, my wife is a terrific woman. You know, when you're a coach's uh, wife, people don't know the sacrifices that, that are made um, it, unless they're, they're, they're in the coaching family. You know, there are so many birthdays and so many times when I've been away. There was one year where I was at the Olympic Training Center literally for three months of that year because we were preparing international teams. And we had four kids at home under the age of 12. You know, that takes a special woman to be able to do all that. And so, you know, my success is, is not just my success. It's my family's and, and the sacrifices my wife has made. She's been an amazing woman to stand by me. Well said. Uh, you've traveled around the world with gymnastics. What has been your most unusual we are moment? You know, an unexpected place where you've heard, uh, where you've heard and maybe got caught off guard by someone yelling out we are. Well, you know, having done this a long time now, I'm not caught off guard by anything anymore that way. Um, I remember just actually being on vacation up in Canada uh, in, in the, the middle of nowhere. And uh, we're out in the wilderness and I, a guy's on the trail and I, I see his, he has a, a Penn State jacket. I go, we are, he goes, Penn State. We stop and talk in the middle of the wilderness, you know. Right. Every Penn Stater has those stories. You know, same thing when I've been over in Europe, other places, we'll be on a plane, we'll be in airports with my guys. My freshmen are always kind of amazed. How do you know him? Well, I don't. I, he's a Penn Stater, you know? We just stopped and talk in the airport, you know? It's family. Trust me, you'll get to know what it's all about, guys. <laughs> Absolutely. It's it's the power of the Penn State network, right? I mean, right. It, it becomes, it goes from being a talking point on the recruiting trail to something that is actually brought to life and that our students live. And then they actually kind of carry it forward when they leave here for other people. And it's, uh, yeah. you know, it's not just a cliche or, or a motto or, uh, but it, it's something that that they will uh, no doubt experience uh, throughout the rest of their lives. Absolutely. I think I know the answer to this question, but besides men's gymnastics, your favorite Penn State sport? Uh, you know, wrestling and football, probably. I love football, too. Love to watch football. You know, we're big football fans. So uh, uh, both, both of those sports probably right there. 
and your favorite flavor of creamery ice cream? I like the, uh, uh, I'm gonna probably have to go with uh, the butter pecan. Butter pecan. Yeah, yeah. All right. I, it's a funny story, you know, I used to teach classes here and, and we would go uh, around campus and around town. I take them on different runs uh, of different lengths. And always towards the end of the spring semester, I'd remind the kids on, on say a Wednesday or you know, with class is gonna finish on Friday for the semester, I'd say, you gotta bring some cash on, on Wednesday. And we'd go on what I'd call a creamery run. So we'd run through town and campus and we'd stop at the creamery and they'd go, what are we doing? I go, well, you're buying ice cream and we're walking back to Rec Hall. And everyone <laughs> would, oh, this is awesome. I said, I wish I could buy it for you, but you know, we got a class of 30, so I'm a coach, I can't do that. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Well, Coach, I really appreciate you joining us on Coffee Hour. Our, our alma mater says, may our lives swell thy fame. And certainly you have swelled thy fame of dear old state through your service here at Penn State, both as a, a student athlete and, and as a coach. And uh, thank you so much for, for being on Coffee Hour and for all you do for Penn State. Uh, it's been a pleasure. And uh, again, I'm really grateful to be able to do what I've done all these years. And I hopefully can continue to do it for a little while longer. Thanks. Absolutely. I can't wait till we can get out on the road again with Coach's Caravan. Sounds great. Look forward to it. And I want to thank everyone for joining us here. If you're a member of the Penn State Alumni Association, thank you for your support. If you're not, what are you waiting for? Go to alumni.psu.edu and you too can become a member of the world's largest alumni association. Thanks for all you do for the university, for the glory, and for the future. We are... <laughs>